Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. Oak here. This week we're going to talk about the two types of sweat glands, also known as sudoriferous glands, but it's the last time you'll hear me say that. So we have what are called apocrine and merocrine or eccrine sweat glands. So apocrine sweat glands, you're going to find them uh, armpits, nipples, and groin. So these are going to be the sweat glands that they're controlled more by your autonomic nervous system and hormones. They're all, they all function as a unit, so they're basically turned on or turned off together, and they produce a very thick, sticky, cloudy sweat. What's special about this sweat is this, this sweat is food for microorganisms. So the microorganisms will actually uh, digest and, and consume and ferment or whatever this thick, sticky, cloudy sweat, and then they produce odor. So the bo body Body odor is actually the the, the off-gassing or metabolism of microbes that, that are eating this apricot sweat. So this sweat, generally not a big deal until you hit puberty then stress and hormonal responses are going to kick in. Anyone that's ever had a, a young child, especially a boy, has probably had to have a conversation at some point that, you know, now they stink and they got to start to take better care of themselves. And that's going to be where this apricot sweat comes into play. As far as its functions, you know, overall, uh, function as a pheromone is unknown. There's not a lot we know about human pheromones yet, but it's believed that apricot sweat could play a role in this communication, this pheromone communication, especially because it's uh, it's linked to uh, reproductive years and, and, and puberty, those types of things, but not really sure. So that's apricot sweat gland. It also might reduce friction in places like the armpits and the groin. So that's apricot sweat. Armpits, nipples, groin produces the thick, sticky, cloudy sweat that ends up causing body odor, body odor when microbes metabolize it. Then we have merocrine, or as you see here, eccrine sweat glands. I call them merocrine sweat glands. These are going to be all over your body. The palms of your feet, soles of your hands are going to have the most, as is your forehead. So those are going to be places where you see a lot of merocrine sweat glands. Think cooling here. So the merocrine sweat glands, they're, produ they're controlled um, independently. So if a part of your body starts to warm up, then merocrine sweat glands are going to release sweat. And then sweat is going to help cool your body off with what's called sweat evaporation. As sweat evaporates off your body, it pulls heat with it. This works really well, especially if it's not humid. In a hot, humid environment, merocrine sweat doesn't work as well because sweat will pool. It won't evaporate off of you. It'll basically pour off your body, and that's why it's so much harder to get cool when it's humid. But we talked about thermoregulation somewhere else. So merocrine sweat, independently, the example I always give here is if you put like your right arm in the stove, don't touch the stove, but like if you're reaching in to get something out or whatever, then your right arm is going to get hot, and your right arm is going to start to sweat. That shouldn't cause it. So only parts of your body that are overheating are going are gonna to sweat. Whereas, so apricot sweat, sweat glands are controlled uniformly. American sweat glands are controlled independently. So merocrine sweat, think sweat evaporation, cooling the body, the sweat we normally think of. And I've already talked about apricot sweat glands. So those are your two types of sweat glands, apocrine and merocrine or eccrine sweat glands. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.